Okay. So this morning, we want to talk about uh, actually consecration. Amen. Consecration. The title I put here is uh, consecration is more powerful and more profitable than deliverance. Amen. Is more powerful and more profitable than deliverance. Because deliverance is like, a, deliverance brings healing. Like when you have sickness, any sickness and they deliver you from it is a healing, okay? It's a deliverance, amen? Deliverance brings healings to the part of the body while consecration brings breakthrough and take us into our destiny. You understand? Uh, during deliverance, we are touched by the power of the kingdom. Meanwhile, consecration take, uh, takes us into the kingdom and give us residency in the kingdom. Amen. The crowd, at the time of Jesus, the crowd received many deliverances and healings from Jesus. But the apostle learned consecration, how to be consecrated to the kingdom from Jesus, to become like Jesus and to become custodians of the power of the kingdom. To the point that when there, are, there were problems, persecution, everybody fled, uh, what do you call it, uh, Jerusalem, the, uh, the apostle remained. So what we are talking about, if you understand it and you get it today, I will, I will talk to about deliverance as well, the importance of deliverance as well. I'm not saying deliverance is not good, but consecration is greater and more profitable than deliverances. Amen. Matthew 11, 12 to 13. He said, and from the time of John the Baptist, or from the time uh, John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advanced. And violent people are attacking it. But now the one, the verse that's that come to a, a follow, he said, for before John came, all the prophets and the law of Moses look forward to this present time. Why? Because God had an agenda. In our time, if you can be violent, you can be consecrated, and you can seek the kingdom, amen, with determination, you can do as much as you desire. Okay? You can gain as much as you desire, or as much as more faith you have, you have more you can gain and more you can do. But in the time of the prophets and the law, what God planned to do or what God did put on you is all that you can do. You can't do anything. You can't. You can You can You can never do, uh, done more. Amen. So. It's a grace, but this is the very time. Amen. This is the very time that we are doing less. Hallelujah. So I can tell you that saying today, I want to win a country. He said, ask for me the country, a nation, I'll give it to you. Okay. How many? The people are asking God every time, please, I want to have this, what do you call it? food business, I want to have this business, I want to have this job, I have to have this title, I have to have this, I have to have... But all these are minor. The riches of the kingdom attract the riches of the earth. But we are not asking the riches of the kingdom. Amen? So we receive the life of Jesus when we are born again. But it is through consecration that he receives our life through our priesthood, I mean, he received our life through our priesthood when we are consecrated and start manifesting his own life through our, our life. Amen. So he starts showing, amen. After that, when, when we are consecrated, he starts showing the personality of the man that is in our spirit, the person we, we ought to be on earth. He starts showing it. This is where we start dis discovering who we are, 
what is our destiny? Amen. The man that is in our spirit man, the one we ought to be on earth, he starts showing that when we start giving our life, amen, to him by consecrating. Because when we are born again, we receive his life. But in full consecration, we gave our life to him. Because a lot of people say, I have given our life to Christ, but we are still on the seat of Jesus. They, 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 they seek to run their life. Amen. Taking our own decision. Amen. Not consulting him. So Jeremiah 1, verse 5 to 7, he said, I knew you before I formed you in the, your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart, appointed you as my prophet to the nation. Now look at Jeremiah say, Oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I am too young for you must go forever. You must go wherever I sent you and say whatever I tell you. But now when did God is saying this to me? When Jeremiah grew up, become a priest, a, a dedicated priest. That's what Jeremiah 1 verse 1 says. These are the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests from the town of Anatov in the land of Benjamin. So he was a priest. Hallelujah. So we have a head and receive many promises that we are not seeing because of a lack of consecration of priesthood. And many, many, I'm not just talking about we individually, okay, or we corporatively, or everybody in the, in, in the church. When I say in the church, in the, uh, in the body of Christ, what the Bible is saying concerning Christianity, concerning the Christians, Sometimes people are asking themselves, people are doubting. Why? Because they have been telling us things, but without showing us how to get there. It's another form of what? Deception. Because all the pastors, all the preachers, all the apostles, all the prophets who made it today, there's one thing they have in common, consecration. They were all consecrated to the living God. But today, God is not saying anymore, you need to be called this title or this title before you can make it. You can get into your promised land. Hallelujah. Look at the life of Joshua, uh, Elijah, Elisha. God took him where? Beyond the Jordan. Israel went beyond the Jordan. Amen. And to go beyond the Jordan, you to going beyond the Jordan is reaching your your what your uh, promised land. But this promised land, when he asked, give me the double portion of your anointing of your spirit, he had it. He uh, well, as we well, he was consecrated in the house of Elijah. And then following Elijah, he had it in his spirit. Knew that what he needed is this. Amen. It's like you, everybody, every one of us, there is something you know that God wants to do with you, and you are not satisfied. Every day you are not satisfied. When we are in the presence of God, you are in the teeth of God, you are not satisfied. You can feel that there is something more, something great. You have some, you call it imagination, but not just imagination. It's something the Spirit is putting in your heart that this is actually what you should do, but that you are lacking the strength or the power that can push you there or that can land you there. But the missing key is consecration. Hallelujah. Is consecration. Amen. So deception is telling people what the Lord prepared for them without telling them how he proceeds. Look at Joshua. Joshua 8, verse 1 to 3. He said, Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all the your fighting men and attack I. For I have given you the king of I, the, his people, his town, and his land. You will destroy them as you destroy Jericho 
and it came. Wait. He said, I have given you. But when God is spoken, he said that he has done it already. But I said, you will. Uh -uh. So present, amen. Presence is what? You know what had happened in the realm of the spirit. You know what you will do in the future. Amen. To have the things in your hand. Amen. So most of the time, God is talking to us. But we are not standing up to go for what is it. But now the things that before in the Old Testament is by the power of God and by physical. But today is by the power. Hallelujah. So people, they fought by the physical, uh, what they, yeah, by, in the physical. Hallelujah. But today everything is in the spiritual. The demons, we don't see them. Unless you grow. And you can you gain power, spiritual power, and you speak, they can hear and they can obey. You will not get what they can be taken from you. Amen. So look at this. He said, but this time you may keep the plunder and the livestock of your for yourself. Set an ambush behind the town. So God even giving the what they have to do. Amen. Set the ambush behind the, the town. So Joshua and all the fighting men set out to attack I. Joshua chose 30,000 of his best warriors and sent them out that night. Amen. So those in the Lord who only love themselves, seek God only for their own problems and needs. And they are very poor and in the riches of the kingdom, because they are not the they, they are visitors of the kingdom, no citizen. And yeah, it's true. The Bible says we are citizens, we are citizens, but it's not true. How many people so who, who, who they say you are citizen of a country, you've never been to that country, you say you are citizen. How can you be citizen? Let's say the truth to each other, amen. But sometimes you may have some dream you see there. Uh, but those who are citizens, they live there. Amen. Anytime they say father, they can see. Anytime they say father, they can go. And they, as they live there, though, they keep on building what riches there. Okay, and building wealth there. And the wealth they are building is the wealth they use here, and that attracts the wealth that we have here. Amen. Those, but those who love the Lord and other, or love just not just the Lord, eh? other people as well, seek the Lord to have intimacy with Him and seek Him for others. They are citizens of the kingdom. Their soul lives in the kingdom. Amen. Because every time they are thinking about the things of the kingdom, because they set your mind on the things of the kingdom, not on the things of the earth. So their soul is there, is always connected. Every time they are meditating on the things of the kingdom, because they are there and they see vision, they see they have opened in all kinds of visions. And yeah, these are people we call citizens. Amen. Their soul lives in the kingdom and they build wealth in the kingdom as they are often there. Our blessing and promises are in the hand of the enemy, and he will not let them go without a fight. He will not let them go without a fight. But now, can you fight him just like that because you are born again? No, you have to grow. Amen. It's, it's true. A pastor, a prophet, whosoever is have the power of God, can do deliverance on you, can pray, a miracle will happen. But do you think you just need one miracle for life? Even when you go to church, you are, you are a member of the church today. Do you think when you come to church every Sunday or every time we meet, you alone, all that you need for the following week will be given to you. The man will be praying for you or the woman will be praying for you and the miracle for uh, that you need every week will be coming. No, but when you grow and you reach where you have to reach, are you Anything you need, because as you, you go before him daily, daily you are getting what you need daily. And the key and the root is consecration. Even is consecration. 
And this has been my message all the time. But people did, were not getting, say, no, uh, because some other people or other churches who are not in the new era, God is launching, so they will be preaching, giving to people, giving to people, and people think that's no, that's not they listen. Okay, they are giving you fish, they don't, they are not sh showing you how to fish. Amen. How to fish. Jesus never give fish to people, give, give, give us how to fish. Amen. Let's go. So, our blessing, as you know, the lay enemy will not let them go. Amen. Some of us, one of I can tell you that. In your family, you don't get people are not getting married, or when you get married, there is always a problem. The enemy has a stake in it, either through a demons or other through a somebody, a witch somewhere. We where all the time, from time to time, maybe every two years or every three years or every year, he remember he or she remember you. You will go and do something and throw something to you. But as your eyes is not open, you will never see it. But if you are somebody who are who acquire. Amen. Uh, gather the riches of the kingdom before even the person does it. You will see it and you strike him or her. Or when the demon, the demon, the demon even cannot come near you because you can see the fire that surrounds you. Or the mighty angels that follow you. Amen. So some of our enemies, uh, some of us, our enemies are the strong men in our families. Amen. The strong men in our family. When I'm talking about the strong men in our family, are some demons. The strong men are some demons. Amen. Some principalities that hold the family in bondage in one area. Hold the family back in one aspect of life. And that aspect of life, their family, generation from generation, they can never enjoy it and they can never achieve it. But when we attack that strong man, we overcome it. You see that you have what you call the breakthrough. Amen. But now when you have the breakthrough and through the deliverance of the sacrifice of somebody and you yourself, you have not built yourself, replace amen, the empty house with a stronger person who is Jesus, which, who is in word, amen, who is in will, his, his ways, his will, and his power. Okay, you, you make it fill your soul. That strong man or another strong man will come and see it empty and attack you again. Amen. So some of us, amen, is, uh, our, um, some of uh, the demons, uh, some of the demons, oh, oh, what do I say? Some demons are the enemy the, uh, the enemy have sent some demons amen, into our life to lead us into disobedience uh, uh, to the way, amen, to the, uh, to the ways of the Lord. So when you disobey, so the demons is in your life. He will make you lie. He will make you get angry. He will make you commit some uh, sexual sin. He will make you commit some certain things that will disobey the ways of the Lord. And then he can keep his spiritual rights that he has over you to hold your promises. So that's why we go through Bible study, teaching everything to establish peoples in the ways of the Lord. And when you are establishing the ways of the Lord, sometimes the, the demons as they know that you are persevering, you are persevering, they cannot have access to your soul. So when we sleep and uh, our, so, uh, our mind is not working anymore, they come and bypass our mind and do things with us in our dream, which are the bad dream. And they sow those things into our soul. And when you wake up, you start having those demonic desires. I, I won't call it demonic, but I call it sinful desires. Amen. And they will warn you for this sinful desires till you commit the sin. Once you commit the sin, say, Hallelujah. He's our boy. He's our girl. Amen. But through consecration, they will not even come near you. Amen. Through, through deliverance, they can go, but they will come back. That's why people who go through deliverance and are just living their life like that. The same thing keep on happening to them from time to time. It's a cyclic, uh, what do you call it, attack that they have from time to time because they don't want to consecrate themselves. Amen? 
So I want to be the best. Uh, what I'm saying, some of our, some of us are so poor spiritually to the level Uh, to, le to the level uh, that we just want to be satisfied with the little, amen, to the little that we can have. What I mean is that uh, somebody who is rich spiritually, let's look at Jesus. They say, rich was, he make himself poor. Look at what he owed before coming on earth. What he can control before coming on earth. What he can have access to before coming on earth. Amen? When you look at all these things, earlier, when you look at all these things, you know immediately that Jesus, while he was on earth, he was poor compared to who he was. Amen? But he did it for you to become rich. For us to become rich. So, if our aim, amen, our greatest desire is just to have certain things that we can see on this earth. I mean, the riches of this earth is little. Aria is little. I mean, so I want to be the best. I want to tell you, I want to be the best wife of Jesus in my generation. I mean, what am I saying? I mean, the one that will be he will be very pleased with. I want to tell you something here, you can get it. We are the bride. If we are the bride, that means we are going to be his wife. Or we are his wife to be. So when you are wife, what do you do? You want to please your husband. As you want to please your husband, your husband gives you the resources. And then provide for you. But you use it, and then you use the, pro the provision. You, to, to, to please him, to do whatever your husband needs. Right now, what Jesus needs the most is souls. So if I consecrate yourself in order to win more soul, to win more soul, to grow more soul, to, make, to get more people to be consecrated to him, to get more people to become citizens of the kingdom, he will be pleased with you. He will be pleased with you. Amen. John, John 2, 1 John 2, verse 2 to 6, he said, he himself is a sacrifice that atoned for our sin. And not only our sin, but the sin of the whole world. Not only our sin, but the sin of the whole world. So the whole world belongs to him. First of all, he created the whole world. And but now he came and died for the whole world. The whole world belongs to him. But now if you are really, really somebody who wants to be sons of God, it's not a joke, who wants to be servant of God, who wants to be I don't know, child of God, and you love your father. You love your father. Anything that belongs to your father and you see in somebody else's life, somebody else's hand, what do you want? What do you do? Either you tell your father if you are not strong enough or if you are strong enough, you go and grab it and take it because it belongs to you, it's for your family. Amen? But now, you, your own life, certain part of your life belong to you and your father, but the enemy is holding it. But it's like uh, you are not too much in worries. It's like you are happy with it. We must not be happy with that. We must go and grab it and bring it back. Amen? Bring it back. So if someone claims, and we can be sure that we know him, if we obey his commandment, Aria, his commandment. And if someone claims I know God, but doesn't obey his commandment, that person is a liar and is not, is not living in the truth. But if those who obey God, God's uh, word truly show how complete the law, you, know, you see what? But those who obey God's law truly shows uh, show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Amen? Because he is a ways, he is a law. Amen? So when you obey, so those who live in him obeys. Those who live in UK, there is a culture in UK 
and there is a rules and the rules in UK. So they are living about uh, 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 with in, in abiding in those rules and laws. So they are living in UK. So when you live in Christ, you have to live by the ways of Christ. Amen. So that's it. So those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. The least among those he is calling in our time are those who, who, will, who want to be like Jesus, David. Man after the heart of God. People who are ready to do whatever will please God. To the point that anything God will ask them, they are ready to do it. Anything God will say, they are ready to, to fulfill it, to do it. Amen. That's why look at look at season. Look at this. You get it. Zachariah 12, verse 6 to 9. Say, on that day, I will make the clan of Judah. Amen. The clan of Judah, what? Like a flame, like a flame that sets. A wolf pie, a blaze, amen. A wolf pie. Amen? So everybody will be on fire to the point that whoever gets in contact with you, the person will catch the fire. That means it's going to be a time of revival. Amen. Okay. Or a burning torch among leaves of green. Okay. They will burn up all the neighbors' nation, right and left, while the people living in Jerusalem remain secure. You see what I'm saying? So if we can get this country completely for Christ, and everybody's burning here, we'll give Jesus a reason for whatever coming, tribulation at the, what do you call it? Third World War, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, the greatest earthquake that is coming. Uh, uh, whatever, a lot less time will give reason Jesus for this one to be spared. For this one to be spared. And this one is valid. God is sending the same message to every single one of his children, wherever they are in this world. It's up to us what we want before those time comes. Amen. Uh, uh, Zechariah uh, 12, 7 now. The Lord will give victory to the rest of Judah. The rest, that means the remnant, the rest of Judah first before Jerusalem, so that the people of Jerusalem and the royal line of David will not have, no, no, will not have greater honor than the rest of Judah. On that day, the Lord will de defend the people of Jerusalem. The weakest among them will be as mighty as David. Okay, so the giant that is coming, I, I'm going to tell you, time is coming, you will see some giants and some whatever, demons will be appearing physically. But Look, what is that David is a David and Goliath. Goliath was a giant, physically talking. What's it? Normally or reason, reasonably, nobody can, a little boy like that cannot kill that one. But God, the way God was giving strategy to Joshua right now, God will give you the strategy you need because he will be inside you, giving the strategy, everything to defeat them. And Lord, let's time come anywhere. You can walk through the streets and nobody will be able to touch you. And yeah, as they cannot touch God, they cannot touch you because God will be with you 100%. But the key and the root is consecration. But now, if today there are certain area of your life or certain aspects that are not good, it's true. We can start with some deliverance, and the deliverance will free you and give you. But now, when you put it after the deliverance, when you put the consecration on, the consecration now will build you and take you where you, it has to take you. Amen. Where I am, verse eight. Is it? Oh, no. He said. He said the weakest among them will be like 
mighty, it will be as mighty as David. So what you cannot destroy, you will be able to destroy. Amen. Okay. And save nations and save town, you alone. And the royal descendants will be like God, like the angels of the Lord who goes before them. So you can see this. The angels, they can appear physically. They can take the angelic body. They can disappear. They can do a lot of things. But David, he was just in the physical body. He could have not disappeared, but he can destroy things that are bigger and stronger than him. Amen. So he said, for that day, I will begin to destroy all the nations that comes against Jerusalem. That means it's after tribulation is going to happen. After tribulation. But now, if we, we can get ready before even tribulation, nobody will touch us. Those who will try us, they will know that, hey, they will run away. Amen. And let's look at what happens in, the, in Jerusalem in the time of uh, tribulation. Amen? Tribulation in Jerusalem. Look at what happened. Uh, Acts 8, verse 1 to 3. It said, a great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem. And all the believers, except the apostles, were scattered, except the apostles were scattered through the regions of Judea and Samaria. Why? Jesus taught them consecration. They were consecrated. As they were consecrated, and they knew that they were men of power. Nobody tried to go near them. Nobody tried to go near them. But all the believers who were following them, want, want, uh, uh, wanting what? Uh, what do Maybe blessing, miracle, this, that, but are not consecrating themselves. Amen. Are not consecrating themselves. They have problem. Amen. It's a best soul. Verse three. Best soul was going everywhere to destroy the churches. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them into prison. But he couldn't get a get into any of the houses where the apostles were. Alia. So because of the great troubles that are ahead of us, only the Lord can save and provide for everyone through those who have chosen to consecrate their life to the, uh, for his interest. This is how the riches of heaven that we, um, that we will have will be attracting the riches of the world into the church and our houses. Because when you have that power, maybe, I, I won't say maybe, hospital, maybe there is no this thing, or a, a lot of things will happen. But as you have God with you, you can pray for people, people will be healed. I'm telling you at that very time, okay, well, let's take the example of Ukraine. Do you think there was no millionaire in Ukraine? or there were no richest people in Ukraine. But when the war broke in Ukraine, okay, the bullet and the bomb, they don't know who is rich and who is poor. Alia, when Corona came, it came before, Corona didn't make difference between poor and rich. But if you, you have something, when, when, when War cannot do anything. You can protect people against war. You can protect people against disease. You can protect people or heal them and take them out of whatever the enemy can throw. Do you think nobody will be touched in this? I say, oh, I want to bless this one. Amen. So, Brothers and sisters, the time has come for us to consecrate ourselves to God and set our heart and then give our heart to, to love God more than ourselves. That's the key, to love God more than ourselves. And the more you love God, the more God you come close to God and God starts showing you who you are. 
And then you start discovering some great, great value and great, great thing God has prepared for you. But the enemy, the lifestyle that the enemy has given you, have hidden those great things, great destiny God had for you. You don't know all of them. Amen. So you start discovering those things. Wow. Amen. Because say what? What I have never seen, ye have never heard. Amen. Ye have never heard. That never come to even our imagine. That's the thing God has reserved to those who love Him. So the thing you love God, you consecrate yourself to God. Amen. Second Samuel, seven verse one to five. He said, "When David, King David, was settled in his palace." And the Lord had given him rest from all the surrounding enemy. The king summoned Nathan, the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in the beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of the Lord of God is out there in the tent. Nathan replied to the king, go ahead and do whatever you have in mind. For the Lord is with you. But that same night, amen, that same night, the Lord said to Nathan, go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord has declared. You Are you the one to build a house for me to live in? And at a later, we know that he said, he said Solomon, he said Solomon, that the Lord have chosen to give it. That's why when Solomon came in, power, Solomon built nothing. The first thing Solomon built was what? The, the temple. It's after building the temple, then he went on and built his own palace. That's why we must put God first in everything we are doing. When we put God first, we see how God will bless us. You we go and check the testimony of Many people God have blessed today. You see that they always put God first. All the people who put God first, God make sure they are ahead of others. God make sure He put them first ahead of others. Because when you put God first, you want God to be first, so God will come with you. So you too, you okay, you will be first ahead. Then every time, everywhere you are, everybody will see you first and see God first with you. Amen. So, the more we love God, the more you discover who you are, who you are truly, you are truly, amen, and start living for your destiny. So, brothers and sisters, only those who truly love God overcome everything from fear to lack of self-confidence or every form of fear and lack of self-confidence. Amen. Amen. Where are we? So I will say, I will say, yeah, only those who truly love God overcome every form of fear and lack of self confidence. Because faith destroys that. But faith is what? The more you grow in unity in, in God, yeah, your soul is going in unity, growing in unity with God, the more faith you have. So you perceive things the way God perceives them. Then you are not shy at all. Amen. They disappear from the scene. And then uh, 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 these people, eh, those who consecrate themselves to God, they disappear from the scene and then appear at the top where those who knew them Except as a uh, expect them not. When you look at Jesus at the age of 12, everybody saw Jesus discover that this boy loves God. This boy loves God. As he loves God, all of a sudden he disappeared. When he appeared, all the people who knew him were not expecting him there and say, Wow, is he not the son of the capital, uh, carpenter? Where is he getting all this wisdom from? 
Amen. So from this 29th of October, 2022, we are going to seek deliverance and healing from for all those who are still having some form of influences of the enemy in their life. Amen. After that, everyone must be focused on the Lord to grow toward his or her destiny. Amen. Together, we can get this country for the Lord by 2029. We will give him reason why this country need to be fully protected from the greatest ever earthquake that is coming. Amen. That one, you can see it in Revelation 16, verse 20 to 22, something like that. Amen. Because some islands even are going to be swallowed. Uh, I thank God that some people from the Caribbean are part of the church. Last time you saw how the Lord used me to go and because one of you asked me to pray. I just went and prayed. The Lord used, took me there and to stop the, what do you call it, the ear, a European ear, and the European did not touch them. So if you grow before, before that, uh, this, that time of earthquake, I believe some of you can go and protect your whole country. And the way through Jesus, God saved the whole humanity through you, God can save your whole country. So there are many, many things God wants to do, uh, what the devil has planned to do, amen? But there are many, many, many weapons and many, many possibilities in God as well. All we need is to consecrate it to God. And if we are consecrated, I'm telling you, what you are looking for as money, fame, whatever, you have them, but it will tell you nothing. Because you'll be so, I won't say busy, but you'll be so linked to the kingdom. Amen. Your attention will be taken by the kingdom to the point that all this will be telling you nothing. Amen. You'll be telling you nothing and you'll be better off anyway. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, we need to give, as we say, we need to give him reason. Amen. For this earthquake, the third, uh, the third world war, persecution, all the rest that are coming, not to touch us here at all. Amen. But we can do it. We can do it. He is willing. He's just waiting for us. Amen. So I will say God bless you. And uh, if anybody uh, have any